Uh, welcome to the CT Wine Review, everyone. I'm Matteo Fagan, and this is David Block from Tally Vineyards, coming in from California. Eh? Uh, welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you. And um, here we are, Bishop's Peak Chardonnay. First, tell us about uh, tell us about the property. Tell us about your the estate. Tell us about your role. Uh, give us the lay down oh. on uh, Tally Vineyards. Okay, Matteo. Uh, my role is national sales manager at yes. Tally Vineyards. I've been there ten years. Uh, the wine that we're drinking is our companion label, it's called Bishop's Peak, named after a volcanic peak right in San Luis Obispo. This label represents wines of the Central Coast region, wines that we make at Tally Vineyards from grapes that are purchased from growers all throughout the Central Coast. We bring those grapes to our winery, we make them right alongside of our estate wines. So this represents very good value, wines that overperform at every price point. Yeah. This is a Chardonnay three different vineyard sources. It's made in a very clean and forward style that I call contemporary. Stainless mm -hmm. steel fermented. But moving away from the whole oaky, buttery style. Exactly. That is really masks the, the quality of the fruit, which you can, the nose here kind of jumps out at you. You are getting some really nice yeah. vibrancy to it. Nice tropical and citrus fruit. We're looking for wine here that is going to be vibrant on the palate, so we've not Block. We've not introduced malolactic fermentation here. We've let the wine uh, go through without having the malolactic, which smooths it out and makes for premier style. So this is going to be crisp, crisp, really, really uh, vibrant on the palate. These, are, this is the kind of wine that you would want to drink on a warm afternoon or as a an appetizer or reception wine wine that will really kind of refresh the palate and goes yeah. very well with lighter fare. And you know what? It is. It's very nice. You can tell this the difference between this and the other oaky butter your styles is this is more diverse. You know, I'd like to ask you something. I mean, what is a non-traditional dish that you would pair this up with? Because clearly this would go with lots of, you know, nice chicken, seafood, but um, what's something that is sort of... Well, recently I had this paired with paella. Paella. Which is a fun dish, obviously, a Spanish yeah. uh, uh, heritage, but uh, it has a little bit of a spicy character to it. Yeah. But the, the, uh, the, the citrus character and the lemon overtones of the wine pairs nicely right. with the, the shrimp and the seafood yeah. uh, uh, in the paella. Yeah, and you're so. getting a little bit of that nice classic sort of honeysuckle kind of components to it. Okay. and. Um, Slight light, you know, light. Um, but those who prefer something more straightforward, serve this with uh, raw oysters. Yeah, good. Yeah, sure. Now we have here the uh, Tally Estate Pinot Noir. And uh, David, before we jump into the Pinot Noir, tell us about the property because I understand it is, um, you have a large farm. So it is a, a blend of farm, it's yeah. actual produce. And um, what percentage is that? Well, the Tallies have been farming in that area since the 1940s, first as vegetable farmers. And in the Arroyo Grande Valley, south of San Luis Obispo, we farm over a thousand acres dedicated to vegetables. Wow. Bell peppers, avocados, lemons, um, heirloom tomatoes, quite a, a diverse yeah. offering. It wasn't until the early 80s that we started our vineyards and they were planted on the hillsides that surrounded the farms. Uh, the area is, is cool and we have a very long growing season which lends itself well to Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And you are actually, this is the beginning of September and your, your harvest, the harvest has begun, We correct? have begun the harvest, that's true. This and I, I noticed on your website that you have a lot of, um, you have you, you have people that, that help out as far as you can get some volunteers. Do you, now do you actually get volunteers or in addition to well I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them volunteers but they oh, are okay. they, full-time employees full-time employees uh, that are working the farm there's a, there's a the few fanatics year. that come in and volunteer but we do have the uh, uh, distinct uh, difference uh, with the tally farms being uh, close by to have full-time labor dedicated to the farming and our vineyard so how does that translate into better better quality fruit? Well, you have a, a dedicated crew that farms the same vines year in and year out, so they become very, very well acquainted and very well versed with the nuances of each different block of the vineyards. So these are people that don't come and go with the season, but they're there all year round. So you say they have a, a higher level of respect for the property? You know, I mean, they're respect not just and in and out? And yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, they, they understand the land, they understand the, the different 
characteristics of each block of our vineyards, mm -hmm. and uh, they have the experience of uh, farming it year in and year out. What, and give me the, the, the soil. What, what can you tell me about the actual... Well, we have, um, we have a number of different soil types. Where the winery is based in our original vineyard is called the Rincon Vineyard. Yeah. And that is a clay loam soil okay. with uh, limestone underneath the topsoil. Uh, a mile away, one of our famed vineyard sites and one of our most prominent vineyard sites is called Rosemary's Vineyard, mm -hmm. named after Rosemary Talley. That is a sandier soil, old marine layer from the bottom of the ocean. Wow. Uh, that is more exposed to the ocean and it gets cooler ocean breezes and more fog. So it's a cooler vineyard site. The two sites are only one mile apart. Oh, wow. So and, all right, let's jump into this Pinot Noir because... And this is a blend of Rincon Vineyard and Rosemary's Vineyard. Rincon and Rosemary. Two thousand nine vintage, um, the very good vintage that challenged us during harvest as we got a blast of hot weather, right as the grapes were first harvesting, so that all varieties ripened at once. Very unusual. Usually, it's more staggered. Two thousand nine presented a certain challenge, a lot of hot weather in a short period of time. Now, and you had said uh, earlier when we were talking that the two thousand nine. So you actually, this is a new release. You don't release your wines for two years. Exactly. The Pinots we like to release two years after vintage date. So they are just coming into the market now, 2009, yeah. here in the fall of 2011. And I, I think this definitely has a lot of seller ability because this is uh, still fairly youthful and it's, um, what, what would you, how long would you say you could lay this down for? Because well, it, to uh, me, it, our Pinots tend, tend to age very well and very slowly. So uh, we've tasted back through our cellar. And I've tasted our wines going back to the early 90s, and the Pinots are still very fresh and very fruitful. So this 2009 would age easily another three yeah. to five years, and even longer if you have a, a good cellar with, with uh, stable conditions. And this is very uh, very smooth and elegant, and it's but it still surprisingly has some has some some kick to it. I mean, it's um, nice um, structure. I think we the structure. That. Yeah, it's definitely structured, smooth finish. But uh, Pinot Noir is something that we're very passionate about, something that we really enjoy, the challenge of growing and, and making it the winery. And uh, the Central Coast region has become very well known for Pinot. Right. <clears throat> this is fantastic. It's very nice. Very nice. Moving on to the Cabernet, we have the Bishop's Peak Cabernet here. Now, this is a, a screw top as well. Exactly. We put the Bishop's Peak wines in the screw top. We also call that the Stelvin enclosure. Uh, I think, as you know, over the years we've experienced a lot of problems from a natural cork closure. Uh, TCA, a chemical, can build up in there and it can spoil a bottle of wine, making it smell musty and almost like wet cardboard. Um, with the Stelv enclosure, that's eliminated. One of the things that, that we have learned in the short experience with Stelvin is that it's really well suited for wines that are meant to be consumed in the near term. Yeah. For aging and for wines that we want to lay down, we still feel that cork is a better closure because it allows the wine to change and age very slowly. For wines that we want to drink soon, yeah. maybe now, maybe next week, maybe at Halloween, uh, we feel that the Stelvin cap is a great uh, alternative. Now, this is a 2007, which is clearly a great year. How is it for you guys? It was it's a wonderful year. Uh, 2007 throughout California was low yields. Uh, meaning less fruit on the vine, adding more flavor, more intensity for mm -hmm. each grape cluster, which translates into more flavorful wines. This is all 100% from the Paso Robles area. As I mentioned earlier, we source the fruit for Bishop's Peak from various vineyards in our general vicinity. This has 24% Cabernet Franc in with 76% Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's still varietal Cabernet Sauvignon. You know, it's, I'm really getting this really... Um, uh, heavy dill kind of component in the nose. I don't know if you get that. I, I get Say a, no. I, <laughs> You'd be like, no. I get I an get herbal dill. character. Uh, <laughs> dill. But, yeah. No, I do get an herbal, you know, dillish. Or it's, um, you know, it's... Almost it's, a little licorice or anise, too, from the Cab Franc. The Cab Franc is always an interesting character, you know, when you have it in there. And I, I think it's um, it's coming out in this, in this. And you said it's only 25%. 25%? Yep. Yeah. 
but it's um, it's nice, solid. It's dark, but it's still a nice weight to it. It's a medium-bodied Cabernet. It's not over the top by any means. Exactly. Um, and um, still a smooth finish. Coming from Paso Robles, we can always expect nice ripe wines because that is a warm growing region. And we get that here along with the spice and the herbal character that you get from the Cabernet Franc blended in. And this is, um, what is the oak? Is there this, neutral This wine oak? is going to be uh, aged in 20% new barrels and neutral barrels. And it's going to be in those barrels for close to 20 months. So, and it is a, as a blend of uh, American oak and French oak for this okay. wine. All right. Well, I know that you're busy here. You're here in town for a brief time, and you have a big event to go to tonight. But always have time for a glass of wine. I always have time for a glass of wine. That's that's great. And uh, so um, hopefully when you have more time, and we can try through uh, some of your other wines next time you're in town. And um, David, cheers. Thanks, Thanks for joining thank us here at the ctwinereview.com. And uh, salute everyone. See you next time.